Hello, I'm Daniel Culligan and I welcome you to this lecture on Classical Armenian. In this part we will get to know some basic features of Armenian word formation. We will see which morphological devices the language uses to form new words. This includes pre- and suffixation, reduplication, compounding, internal derivation and the derivation based on inflected forms. We will take a closer look at compounding and see how first and second members of compounds behave and which semantic types of compounds we find. So, what are the morphological devices used for forming new words? Let's look at derivation first. Classical Armenian uses both prefixes and suffixes to form verbs and nouns. Here are some examples. Götanem, to find, and derived from that, ist Götanem, to blame or unim to have, hold, and und unim, receive, or goch, satisfied, grateful, and from that we can derive a verb gohanam, to thank. In nominal derivation we also have prefixes and suffixes, so examples are z as a prefix, meaning to, at, around, also used as a preposition, in as gist, clothing, and ara, at, to, in the noun ara spell, a story, a fable. The most productive suffix for abstract nouns is utyun, for example, the adjective harar, peaceful, and from that we can derive a noun hararutyun, peace. Suffixation is much more productive than prefixation in Armenian. Another productive process is reduplication, both partial and full reduplication. It is not employed inflectionally, so there are no reduplicated perfects known from other ancient Indo-European languages such as Greek and Sanskrit, for example. Reduplicated forms are, as part of inflectional paradigms are lexicalized. An example is the reduplicated aorist of the verb to make, arnem, and the aorist is arari, I made. For the formation of verbs, both partial and full reduplication are possible. So here are some examples, like tzitzarim, to laugh, popochem, to change, there's a simple verb pochem beside this, or tatavem, to dip into water, and there's a simple verb tapem, to pour. For full reduplication, we have forms like zig zigem, pull in various directions, there's a simple verb zigem, to pull, or hot or tim to smell, which is very likely to be dissimilated from hot hot tim to uh, smell. And there's dandaram to stop, from a form dar daram possibly, there's a simple verb daram to remain. For nouns, we have examples such as cockard, throat, mamul, press, mamur, moss, and mamur, sawdust. So this is a productive process uh, in classical Armenian. At the border between syntactic repetition, compounding and reduplication, we find forms such as on the one hand mets mets, very big, and the compound mets are mets with the same meaning. Such compounds repeating the same stem may or may not show the compositional vowel a, as for example germ a germ on the one hand and varvaraki on the other. Varvaraki also shows us that suffixes of course may be added. In addition, there may be a vowel change in the stem, so in some instances this may even be inherited from the proto-language, as is probably the case of bards raberts, very high, contrast the simple adjective bardzer, high, and there's also yerknaberts, sky high. Uh, we can also compare forms like harni hurn, mixed, confused, spar spur, completely, and kerakur, food, for words with a vowel change. An especially interesting case is yurakanchur, everyone, which includes the negation ch. It probably derives from a syntam yurkanchur. The pronoun is usually understood as of oneself rather than not of oneself. But kan may have a non-comparative meaning too, so probably of oneself as much as not of oneself, which then developed into everybody. Internal derivation is the process of deriving one word from another without pre or suffix, but by a word internal change. This is found in a number of forms. Armenian preserves in European ablaut variation between base form and derivative in cases such as anzen, person, self, soul, and in the plural anzink, and then we have a derivative mi anzen, uh, um, an anchorite, a monk, literally a single person, and the plural is mi anzunk. 
This vowel change, of course, reminds us of similar uh, cases in, for example, Greek, fren, frenos, midriff or mind, and aphron, senseless. However, this is not a really productive feature of the language in historical times. As we have seen in the module on phonology, Armenian has a fixed stress accent on the last full vowel of the word, and it does not employ accent shifts for conversion, as does, for example, Vedic Sanskrit, in a pair such as Brahman, sacred formula, and Brahman, priest. So that doesn't exist in Armenian. What is productive is uh, the derivation of nouns not from stems, but from inflected forms. Examples are for example, given here, uh, and Armenian is rather famous for this, um, forms based on the instrumental case. So we have ayer, man, for example, and then aramb, with a man, and we can derive from that a noun arambi, a married woman, that is, someone who is with a man. The same goes the other way around. With kin, we have woman, and then kanamb, the instrumental case, uh, with a woman, and derived from that kanambi, married man. This may be understood as based on a phrase X is with somebody, so either man or woman, and the noun as the one who is with a man or a woman. A case uh, of a form derived from the genitive could be keri, uncle, the mother's brother, if this is from the genitive of queer, sister, care, that is, he of the sister. A prepositional phrase is the basis for uh, the words tsaik, night, and serek, day. They are formed with tz, up, to, until, and aig, dawn, and yerek, evening, respectively. From the nominal clause chik, there is nothing, which uh, consists of the negation ch, not, and ik, anything, we can derive forms like chikmer, innocent, with mer, sin, chikavor, poor, a have not, and Chikastan, a poor, unfortunate country. So we see that we have prepositional phrases from which we can derive nouns, and also uh, we have nominal clauses from which we can derive nouns in Armenian. Finally, nouns may also be derived from inflected verb forms. This is found, uh, for example, in go, there is, there are, a copular verb, and from that we have a substantive go existence. It is found in the Gospels, for example, in the instrumental uh, adverb goyev completely. So here's an example uh, for this. Zamanay inch zor uner ark goyev completely chapas kiansur. So she has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Uh, so this is the instrumental of this form. And uh, we also found it, find it in the negated form, chigoye, for the lack of something. So this is uh, marked for ablative case in the following example, Matthew 13.5, ar i chigoye yuto yekrin, for the lack of depth of soil. And here we have ch, uh, the negation, and uh, the ablative marking. So the non-existence of something. Yesnik attests also the accusative go, so uh, this is a rather long example where we find uh, various interesting forms. Um, so he brought the non-existent ones from non-existence into existence and he made those who are not appear from non-being into being. So here we have various interesting forms. The first to note is go existence itself. So this depends on the preposition e. So into existence. Um, and here we have the same preposition, this time used with the ablative, uh, as we can see here, the ch goye, which we have already seen from non-existence, from lack of, from non-existing. And here we have as uh, chuguisen, those that are not. So this is uh, derived from go once more with a negation, ch added to it. And then this is inflected as an accusative. It is definite and it has the marker of uh, differential object marking for the direct definite object, those that are not. And particularly interesting is also uh, this last form here as chesen, which consists um, of the copular verb e, it is, it exists, and this then is used as a noun, uh, which is negated, the things which are not, Added to this, we have S, that is the uh, accusative plural marker, and again, the two markers of um, a definite object. So the things that are not. So these are possible ways to derive nouns. 
does Armenian have noun incorporation? So understood as the compounding of a grammatical category, a verb, usually with a different category, a noun, um, and the former retains its syntactic function, so it stays a verb. This is not a productive process in Armenian, so basically no. However, we have light verb constructions which show certain tendencies which may be seen as incipient stages of noun incorporation. So uh, there are two points here. First, nouns that are generally, generally marked for plural only, so-called pluralia tantum, tend to lose their number marking. That is, they appear in the singular equal to the bare stem in the light verb construction. So here are some examples for this. We have an noun vrishk, revenge, which is usually always in the plural, but if we put it into a, a verb construction with chandrel to seek revenge, that is to uh, yeah, have revenge or uh, seek revenge for oneself, then we have vrishk chandrel, and uh, we also have a noun derived from that verb phrase vrish chundrutsyun. Um, a similar case is uh, demg, face, on the one hand, always in the plural, but we have dem denel, to direct oneself, literally to put one's face, uh, which is probably a calc of the Syriac sam ape, which means basically the same thing. In some instances, and this is the second point, the internal object NP of the light verb construction does not block an external object NP, which seems to imply that the argument slot of the verb is no longer filled by the internal uh, nominal phrase. So, for example, this is the second example here uh, in Luke 11, 7, me ashat aner zis, uh, so do not bother me, um, which is literally do not trouble make me, you know, where we have might think of two external objects, but actually we probably have already an nil incorporated ashat uh, going together with arner, and then the external object is this, me. The most productive process for forming new words is suffixation in Armenian, and uh, there's a very extensive treatment for classical Armenian, uh, also in 1999, which discusses all the nouns attested in the Bible translation. As in uh, the lexicon generally, the Iranian influence is noticeable in nominal derivation as well. So we have many suffixes which are borrowed from Iranian languages such as pate, master of something. So here's an example like uh, Kahanaya Pate, uh, the high priest, uh, which is a Syriac loanword originally Kahna, uh, and to this uh, added the Iranian word Pati, lord, master. Or we have bar, uh, forming adverbs and adjectives expressing manner, such as, for example, charabar, having evil ways, from Iranian bara, carrying, which is comparable to Greek phoros compounds. And interestingly, beside this borrowed form, a meaning also continues the inherited suffix vor in nouns such as tagavor, the king, literally crown bearing. Compounding. That is, the formation of a lexeme by putting together two independent lexemes is a highly productive process in Armenian. It continues the productivity of compounding as a process of word formation already present, very much likely, in Proto-Indo-European, just like Greek, Germanic and other languages do. Types with minor productivity are prepositional compounds and compound verbs, which is probably why, when translating such forms from Greek, the Armenian translators use different types of compounds. An example is a form like Greek symboleuon, advising, which is translated with a periphrasis, charat, to, counsel giving. In most compounds whose second member starts with a consonant, a vowel A intervenes between the first and the second member. So, for example, in Asteragit, the astrologer, we have Aster, star, and the compound vowel A, and then the adjective Gate, knowing. From the point of view of Indo-European, this is a bit unexpected, because in other languages, such as Greek, the linking vowel is O. So, here's an example from Greek, kuno kephalos, dog-headed and O is usually retained in Armenian. So probably it is Iranian again that provides the model for this, where the compound vowel is usually A. In some instances, outside stems ending in A, one can infer that the first member ended in E or U, which has been deleted due to the accent on the final syllable of the compound. For example, ban wise, 
with bun, which is a stem in e, so the original compound would be bunny gate, and this is reduced to bun gate. And the same goes for hrat two, which we have just seen. Hrat is a stem in u, so probably the compound is actually hratu two, and then this is reduced to hrat two. In most cases, the first member appears identical to the form of the nominative singular if we discount the regular reduction of e, u, and e. So, for example, we have zern hand and zern tu helping giving a hand, or we have unken ear and unken dear putting one's ear, that is, listening attentive. Uh, but first members of compounds may also be inflected case forms. So, for example, the accusative is found in buns arku, the devil, which is derived from the phrase buns arkanem, uh, to throw words, uh, which is a uh, derivation uh, to render the Greek form diabolos, slenderer, devil. So one who throws with words and then slanders. A unique form is found in Yeznik, uh, the first Armenian theologian in chapter 122. We have a form Ezban Gatan, inventor of words, which is based on the stem of the verb Gatanem to find and the definite accusative of Ban word. In the context, this uh, probably uh, ad hoc compound means people who invent words and names for things that actually do not exist. Also, genitives occur as first members. For example, in Aregaken, I or source of the sun, with an archaic genitive of Arev, son. And we have Horechbaya, father's brother, uncle, with a genitive of higher. Historically, this may continue the stem pater, that is, the stem and not the genitive patros, uh, but uh, synchronically, this is identical to the genitive. With the instrumental, we have Zerbakal, prisoner, with the archaic instrumental case of Zern, namely Zerb. Uh, the synchronically regular form is Zeramb. And added to that, the aorist stem of the suppletive verb Unim, to have, hold, take, color, that is, taken by hand, which again is probably a calc of Middle Persian dust, gadav, prisoner, literally taken by hand. Bambasem, to insult, could be a decasivative form with an instrumental bamb beside the synchronically regular form baniv and the verb asem, to say. So it would mean something like to say with words of slander. Bam could have arisen in the compound banivasem, which then went to bambasem with syncope of unaccented i and assimilation of nb to mb. Alternatively, it could be based on the first and second singular of the verb to say, namely bum and bus, meaning roughly to engage in I say, you say, meaning to slander. Both analyses are actually already proposed in the Venice Dictionary from 1836. Final members of compounds usually retain their inflectional class, but there are a few cases where it differs uh, from that of the simplex. So here uh, are some examples for that. We have vororm, which is a stem in o, pity, but the compound an vororm is a stem in e, which we can see in the genitive plural, which is an vohormits. The same goes for chrat, which we have already seen, uh, a stem in u, advice, and then we have an chrat, and the genitive plural is an So again, this is a stem in i, giving no counsel. This, of course, reminds us of similar phenomena seen, for example, in Latin, where we have the type barba, imberbis, arma, inermis. And so this might continue uh, an archaism in Armenian, and it is not very productive. Now, let's have a look at the semantics of compounds. They can be classified as copulative, endo, and exocentric compounds. The first, the copulative compounds, are combinations of two words belonging to the same part of speech. Usually this means a noun plus a noun, an adjective plus an adjective, and a numeral plus a numeral. A particular subtype, which is productive in Armenian, is the so-called bed and breakfast type, as Olson calls it. That is, copulative compounds with a conjunction yev, or its variant u, as in airevzi, man and horse, meaning cavalry which shows inflection of both elements. In the genitive, we have arn u zio. It may also be formed from verbal stems, as in tar uber, meaning agitation, which consists of tanem, eris tara, take, drag, and berem, bring. Variants of this type are those with either the linking vowel a, 
For example, hearts are pards, investigation, from hearts on em, ask, and pards em, try, or without, such as lurtes, a spy, a scout, from lesem, listen, and the aorist is lua, uh, the imperative is lur, so that's where we get our lur from, and tes on em, the aorist is tes, so listen and watch. With adjectives, the linking vowel uh, is, usually, is used consistently, so compounds of this type are often built with roughly synonymous meanings such as tansrachit, thick and dense, and hastapind, firm and solid. Determinative compounds with either a case relation between the two members, that is the tatpurusha type of Sanskrit grammar, or a positional attributive relation, the karmadharayas, are very productive in Armenian. Usually the first member determines the second, and the relation between the two is one of a genitive or a dative. So for example, kara kamej, uh, the center of the city, the central square. With karak, uh, meaning city, and mej, the middle, the square. In some cases, this relation may also surface in the morphology. So again, we may have inflected first members, as in arnakin, a man's woman, a married woman, with the genitive of ayr, arn, as the first member. In appositional or attributive compounds, the first member may be a noun to which the second member is compared, such as Maira Karak, mother city. That is, a city which is like a mother. So originally this was said in relation to colonies, the daughters of the original city. Or an adjective that qualifies the second member, as in Verna Gavar, so upper region with Verin, upper and Gavar region. The order may be reversed, as in Gulchapart with gluch, had, reduced to gluch in the compound, and part meaning guilty, so the whole thing then meaning deserving capital punishment. Exocentric compounds, the bahuvrihis in Sanskrit grammar, or possessive compounds, are mostly adjectives, describing a possession or a pertinence in relation to a given noun, not named in the compound itself, such as, for example, mezzatun, rich, which is composed of metz, big, and tun, house. So literally meaning something like one who has a big house. The same goes for bare kam, friend, which consists of bari, good, and kam, will. So the one who has a good will, who is good willing. The order of elements may be reversed here too. A type known by the English example Armstrong. Uh, so this is in Armenian, for example, in zern unain, empty-handed, so with zern hand and unain empty, or sirta big, heartbroken, with sirt reduced from sirt, and bekanem to break. In verbal governing compounds, the second element is a verbal stem that in most cases takes the first element as its object, such as shahaber, bringing profit, so shah, profit, berem, to bring, or aknagorts, jeweler, akin i, or jewel, and gortsem, make. But it may also have an instrumental as first element, uh, semantically, as in bana kariv, fighting with words, from ban, word, and kurvim, to fight, to struggle. Uh, the relation may also be one of place and time, as we see it in Gisher Apach, nocturnal guard, from Gisher, night, and Pahem, to keep watch. And finally, the verbal second member may also have a passive interpretation, as in Artsat Agin, bought with silver, from Artsat, silver, and Ganem, to buy, or Yerkratsin, born on earth or out of earth, from Yekir, earth, and synonym, to give birth or be born. Prepositional governing compounds, as I said at the beginning, are not very productive in Armenian. As we have already seen, prepositions are lost completely in the modern language. Some instances that we find in the classical language are, for example, in dunain, empty, vain, beside the simpler form unain, or yaragas, on account of, concerning, which consists of e, yod, the preposition, and a noun, arag, means reason. So, in this section, we have seen some basic features of Armenian nominal word formation. Prefixation is becoming less productive in historical times, while suffixation and composition remain highly productive. The language allows not only the derivation of words from stems, but also from inflected forms with case endings, and, in the case of composition, permits inflected forms as first members of compounds. So, Thank you for your attention.